Uh, good morning. And now that the sun is up, we just want to show you what we are seeing in the Patapsco here, in my angle here. And I want to start, if you can go into that, the ship there. And you can see just that massive ship in the middle of the water. And you can see the remnants of the bridge. And again, this is from the Baltimore County viewpoint. And the first thing I noticed when the sun started to go up is, is just over to the side of that, you can see the ramp uh, where that was leading to the bridge. And you can see there just there's no more bridge there. It's just heartbreaking. You can see just where, where it, it ends. You can see what's left of the key bridge. Uh, an absolutely incredible view. We've talked about the challenges, diesel fuel in the water, silt, the tide, the cold temperatures. At least we've got daylight now. Um, I want to bring in a neighbor here in this community, Jeremy, and you live uh, fairly close by. Uh, tell me, what did you see and hear again this around 1.30 this morning. Were you sleeping? Were, were, did it wake you up? I was sleeping and then it like, it kind of sounded like, uh, we have a lot of airplanes that go across. Mm -hmm. So it sounded like that at first and then we felt the vibration and then it was just like a really like vigorous like vibration. And Are you connected? Yes. Okay. Now, I mean, you could tell the bridge was gone this morning, but now it's just, it's like, a, it's tragic, man. Yeah, how many times would you say you've crossed the key bridge in your life? I mean, I just crossed it yesterday twice for work. It makes you think a lot, right? I mean, you never know what could happen. I mean, yeah, but, you know, uh, life goes on, but I, I just pray for the people that are involved, you know. Yeah, and, and just describe, you know, given the conditions, it's it's cold out here. I mean, can you even imagine what, what they're having to go through? And, and they said they're going to keep, you know, searching. They're going to stay on this until they have gotten everyone out that they can. But it's got to be extraordinarily difficult. I can't imagine what, what they go through. I mean, I have first responders in my family, but uh, I tell you what, they'll get the job done. That's all I know. And, and and tell me when you were like jolted, what did you think it was? Did you did you look at your phone right away? I mean, how long did it take oh, you to realize? Yeah, I didn't look at my phone, but I, I did run outside because I thought like a plane crashed. Sounded yeah. that it was that it was harsh. That loud, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, that's close. So I went and looked around, didn't see anything, and then went back inside. And my uncle actually called me and said the key bridge collapsed. So. I, I mean, yeah. it's such a t talk to me about the importance of that you know, bridge too. I mean, it's, I, I think I, I read a statistic roughly 30,000 cars a day. It's also where a lot of the uh, hazardous chemicals go through because they can't go through they the tunnel. Through the tunnel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the main right even, even with uh, like plumbing, I'm in plumbing and HVAC mm -hmm. right now. So even with plumbing, you can't take acetylene tanks through the tunnel. So it's going to be a big strain on not only just day to day, but tradesmen's lives as well. You know, uh, I heard you say you used to fish under there. I mean, just to think of that massive steel structure, how big it is, and, and something that could cause it to collapse. I mean, it's baffling. I mean, I, I'm, I can't fish under there no more, but, uh, man, it's, I don't know, the force the, it, the force that it took to do that, and it doesn't look like the, the ship's damaged at all. So massive I, ship, yeah. It, it's, it's just crazy. it's hard to even describe because I know people are seeing aerial views and and different angles of this, but just from right here where we are on the edge of the water, and we're we're a little bit far away, but it's just it's just incredible. It it is incredible. It's devastating to look at. To think something's been there since 1977. Actually, the anniversary just passed yeah, on the 24th. Yeah, a few few days ago. So you know to think something's been there 40 plus years or whatever. I'm not good at math, so I'm no, 47 years. Yeah, it, it's, um, it, it's just, it's hard to fathom, right? I mean, people are saying, yeah. even I think I heard the mayor say it's like something out of a movie. Yeah, I mean, it, it's exactly what it's like. Uh, one of my neighbors came up and they said it was like an action movie. You know, it's something you feel like you're in a, in Hollywood. You know, you're not. It's not real. It's a dream. So. And sadly, it's real. And they're, you know, right now they're trying to save these people. Yeah, I mean, I hope I hope every single one of them's okay. I prayed for them. And I'll continue to pray until they're found or okay. So that's all we can do. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And uh, again, we we know that uh, the crews are uh, haven't been interviewed. They're still on the ship, from what we understand. And we've been showing you this angle. I want to show it to you again, if you don't mind, just where we are in relation to the port. 
um, and you can see the port is right next to us. So the dolly had left a little bit less than a half hour before the collision, left the port, went out into the Patapsco, and then didn't make it very far um, and rammed into one of those support piers. And that's where it sits right now. And that's where the rescue efforts are focused to try to make sure if there's anyone still alive in that water that they can they can get them out that they can they can save lives uh, again just an incredible scene here uh, from baltimore county as we continue to digest the news that the key bridge collapsed this morning just around 1 30 this morning and we want to talk to another neighbor here uh, you live here in Turner Station. I live in Sparrows Point. Sparrows Point. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what did you see in here this morning? Well, I was actually asleep, and um, I saw it on social media. So my dad was actually calling, because my dad takes the key bridge, like, every single day to and from work. Wow. And he just took the key bridge, like, getting over to work. Just before this happened? Mm-hmm. And he was calling the house because no one was answering. And I'm just like, who's calling at, like, 1 in the morning? It's my dad. And he was all like, the key bridge, the key bridge. And I just like, it's crazy because my dad takes that bridge and I was about to take that bridge. I think it's something that all of us think about. Yeah. A and now, look behind you. I mean, just incredible. Uh, looking at that, wh crazy. what's in your heart? Crying. <laughs> like, I've been crying. But, like, it's, I don't know, like, I really do pray for Baltimore and Dundalk. Because this bridge, was it meant a lot to me, like, growing up around here, especially in Sparrows Point. I've taken this bridge like to everywhere, vacations, like. Is it hard to be here right now and look at this yeah. and see just how it's just not even there and you can see the ramp that goes up to it and then there's nothing. Um, I, I mean, uh, you, you must be, I only think a lot of people who, who take the bridge, you're like, I, can, I can't even fathom being on that bridge and having it collapse. You know, like. I want to say it's like, like it's glad to be in the middle of the night. Like, I really do hope they find more people in the water. And it wasn't during rush hour, because the rush hour would have been much, much worse. It would have been. I mean, describe in the morning when you've taken that bridge, it, it can get pretty crowded. Yeah, I don't take the bridge in the morning. Okay. But I know, like, my dad, he takes it in the middle of the night to basically, like, right in the morning, because that's what time he gets off. So I imagine him going over that bridge at, like, 11 a.m., like, it's got to be crazy. I'm sure you're going to hug your dad yes. when you see him. I am. The biggest hug. I, I mean, um, uh, what, do you, what do you think about just, uh, what are some questions that you have? Do you think it's important? I know that you know, the focus right now is on the search and rescue, but it's important to find out how this could even happen. I mean, we've seen ships, you know, going under the bridge, but you never think about this. I never even thought about like a ship actually hitting the bridge because even just like standing here looking at it, like ships go under the bridge all the time. So like, I just don't understand how it happened. Yeah. And it's a massive ship, as you can see. I mean, those containers just stacked up. It's it's even hard to, to, to really describe how large it is. And then, you know, your heart has to go out for anybody who was on that bridge when it was struck yeah the, the workers that are on the bridge like my prayer stuff they go out to them and their families anybody that was driving over the bridge goes out to my heart goes out to everybody because and for the search and rescue team because anything else can happen out there and i'm just hoping it doesn't now how is this going to affect you and your family because you got to find another way around too yeah we'll have to probably go through like the um like the tunnels yeah or take like 695 all the way around but even then taking 695 is already traffic yeah so it's just gonna be more traffic just something you got to leave earlier and then what was your reaction when you saw the video i know uh, a lot of people have looked at it. i looked at it several times it, it just happened so fast yeah it was like I was comparing it to like one of my science like projects, like when we used to build popsicle sticks and see what like the weight can hold, like it went down so quickly. It's almost just unimaginable how fast it all happened. Yeah, it was, it happened really fast, like extremely fast. 
Well, thank you, Kendra. You're welcome. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, and uh, sorry under these circumstances, but thank you for sharing your perspective. And I know a lot of people uh, right now uh, have a lot of the same thoughts. I mean, just, you know, she, as, as Kendra said, her dad uh, had just crossed the bridge, and uh, thankfully he made it, but there's so many others right now that they are searching for right here at the Key Bridge. I want to now show you what it looks like this morning as the sun is now rising. Understand, we are less than a quarter of a mile away from where this collapse happened here. You see that we still have law enforcement here blocking off the area, but when you look down, you can see pieces of the bridge now this morning. Understand that this is a bridge that was here since 1977, and now it is completely gone. 1.6 miles of this bridge gone. This is something that was so impactful for our community in Baltimore area. Understand 31,000 vehicles will travel on this daily, according to MDTA, and now this is no longer an option. Keep in mind, this means that the 695 loop that so many would use is completely gone now. We understand that a lot of trucks would use this area, especially since they could not go through the tunnels, especially if they had hazardous material that they need to transport, and now that is no longer an option. Police still are still advising people to please not be in this area. They are deterring you. Go through 895, 95 instead. 695 is no longer available. It's something we never thought we would ever have to say, where Francis Scott Key Bridge is completely gone. Reporting live, I'm Alexis Davila for WJZ. Joining me now is Donald Heinbeck. He is a witness to this collapse. Uh, Donald, thank you for being with us. I imagine this has been just such an emotional and difficult day for you and so many others in this community. Tell us a bit about what you saw and heard this morning. Uh, good morning. Um, we were awakened by what sounded like a rolling thunder coming through, and it, it felt like an earthquake. When the bridge came down, it did uh, crash into the water and it made uh, quite a noise and it did create a, a vibration that went through the community. This community where I live is the closest community to the bridge. So it's actually right behind me. Um, and I had previously been a chief of operations in Baltimore City for the fire department. So I turned on my uh, radio and found out where the incident uh, was going on, and I, I went to the to the scene where the command post was being set up to watch that uh, ensue, and um, uh, just got caught up in the watch and that. But as far as the impact, a lot of the people here can't get to work uh, over the Key Bridge, and they're going to have to take detours uh, several miles out of their normal route. I just wonder, especially because of your experience with the fire department, Donald, have you seen anything like this before? Uh, several times uh, we had a, a train explosion and derailment in the Howard Street Tunnel in downtown Baltimore uh, some years back, uh, and that created an um, uh, impact on the economic uh, ability of the, of the city. But uh, this, this is a whole different animal, and um, yet yeah, very serious, it's, it's, but it's something that we actually train for. We train for things like this, and... The uh, multi-agency response and the way the teams came together was very impressive, very impressive. And can you talk about how the community is responding? I imagine, you know, it must be quite a frantic feeling to wake up and to see and hear about something like this, as you say, just down the road from your home. Well, we depend on the media to help us out and to tell us the uh, best routes to take. Uh, to uh, detour around the uh, the emergency up there, and um, I, I think the media's done a pretty good job on that, having you know been been through these experiences before. But the media played a, a big part in getting the information out to the folks who have to go to work. So uh, I think it's even though it's it's really a, a disaster up there, uh, I think in, people are dealing with it uh, in a very reasonable way, responsible way, and in many ways the ways that we're trained to deal with things. And, you know, you mentioned a bit about the location here. I want to ask more about that. There is the bridge. There is also the port. These two are very, as I understand, important areas, not just to the local community, but the greater economy. Yes. Yeah, so we have uh, two cruise ships that go in and out of Baltimore. So there are two cruise ships that are coming back to where we're not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And the backup the um, marine traffic has already taken place. Uh, if you go onto any of the marine mapping uh, sites, you'll see where the the um, 
ships are just backing up in the bay. They have to make turns, go back to another port. So it's, and rails, rail lines are affected. And hazmat, uh, the hazmats that are going through the Baltimore area have to take a detour uh, around the Baltimore Beltway as opposed to going over the Key Bridge. So that puts a lot of time and expense into their um, operations. And I wonder, Donald, because you seem like you're very active in the community. You said you have this experience with the fire department. You know, did people come out of their homes in the middle of the night when this happened? Were you getting phone calls? Walk me through what was happening as soon as you found out. Well, I guess I'm an exception to the rule. I, I have a, a radio that I can listen to on mm-hmm. the fire. So I, I know exactly where to go. But it's kind of in a remote area as as far as uh, residences are concerned. Uh, okay. It's an indi- yeah. Uh, on this side, now this is the, um, what would be the south or west side of Anne Arundel County. But Baltimore County is a little different. It may be uh, more resident on that side. But again, Baltimore County is severely impacted. The uh, Old Spires Point has been recently developed with a lot of uh, industry. So all those workers, many of them are affected adversely with their um, travel in, in, in the morning or in the afternoon. I just so, wonder. Yeah. 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 Donald, I just wonder before we let you go, how you feel looking at this happen. I mean, miles away, you look at these dramatic images and it is just so shocking to your core. How does it feel to just be so close to something like this? Well, I, again, I have a different perspective. I look at it, I look at it from someone who's been trained to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I was impressed with the response and the way people came together. And I look at things like the media again, the been doing a great job in keeping us informed. So as much as we can do to mitigate the problems associated with the incident, I think we're doing okay. But again, the investigation has to go forward to find out what happened and how we can prevent situations like this from occurring again. Mm-hmm. It's just, we, we just can't have these things happen. Absolutely. Donald, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Joining us now on the phone with more on this story is Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, Thanks so much for being with us, Mr. Mayor. I imagine this must be an incredibly difficult morning for you, for your entire community. First of all, how are you? Well, I'm as good as can be. This is is not about me. It's about uh, those families that are directly impacted in the community that is having an unspeakable tragedy unfold right before their eyes. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Let's start with the latest on the ground. Any updates on the number of people rescued there? No, same number, still two, and we're still looking for for uh, those seven individuals, um, and that's what the focus is for us. So this is an active search and rescue uh, that we're going to continue. Uh, we are well, first and mainly concerned about those souls uh, that we know that are in the water, and everything else is secondary to that. Okay, and can you speak a bit about the impact on the community this morning and your role in all of this? We understand there are multiple agencies working in tandem on this search and rescue effort. Yeah, listen, this is this is not just a city of Baltimore effort. I just uh, was on site. Uh, our governor came on site uh, to the search and rescue. Uh, Everybody is working together, city, state, uh, federal folks, local folks, the county folks are here supporting my good uh, friend and colleague, County Executive Chef, who has been with us. Everybody's working together to try to save lives because that's what matters right now. Okay, and we are just getting some new information this hour, Mayor, uh, about what officials believe may have happened. The boat, the ship that is, lost propulsion before this bridge collapsed. Can you confirm this? Do you have any additional details around this? I cannot confirm. All of that is still in, 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 it's a part of the open investigation. Uh, there will be the time for us to go, to go through and dissect every single moment and put that timeline together. Uh, but right now, uh, our focus is on the search and rescue and saving lives. We're happy that the individuals on the vessel uh, seem to be okay, but there are folks in that water that we need to find. So the White House is saying, Mayor, that they're willing to offer assistance in this case. What kind of help might you need? 
Well, listen, we're, we're, we, I, I've had direct contact with uh, Secretary Buttigieg and members of the White House and, and the president's staff. We're very grateful. We'll be reaching out to them for every single kind of asset that we may need. We already have support, obviously, uh, from the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. But as we go through uh, this tragedy and as we go through uh, the phases, uh, once we get through search and rescue and uh, looking at how we can uh, get the debris and all of the things out, how we can work uh, with in tandem to get our port and all the things back open, uh, we'll be making every single asset we can of our wonderful federal partners. Uh, but right now, all of our asks are you know, about the search and rescue. And, Mayor, have you spoken to either the president or anyone in the Biden administration this morning? Yes, I have, actually. I, yes, I have spoken uh, to members of the Biden administration. Like I said, I spoke to Secretary Buttigieg directly uh -huh. and Tom Perez, who works directly uh, uh, for the, the president at the White House. And, you know, this was such a massive bridge. It happened in a matter of just moments. It also happened, notably, at the nation's ninth busiest port. Can you talk us through the impact on the area? Yeah, listen, this, the port... Everyone depends on this port, right? Mm -hmm. It's a huge, huge thing for us. We know how important the port is, but right now it's not as important as those lives, and that's where my focus is. And the focus, obviously, in the air and in the water right now. Can you talk a bit about the scale of this rescue operation? Uh, it's a big scale. You're talking about dive teams from uh, multiple police departments, multiple uh, fire departments, state agencies that have a dive team support out here. Everybody's working uh, to find these individuals uh, to make sure that we are, are leaving nothing unturned in our search. And, you know, Mayor, there have been some challenges overnight because this happened around 1.30. Yeah. Uh, we kept hearing about you know, darkness being a huge obstacle for search and rescue teams who were there on scene. Do we know when those two people were rescued? Was it after the sun came up? No, they were they were rescued before the sun came up. And mm -hmm. uh, even though we know there's challenges uh, presented by the by the darkness, uh, we have to make sure that we're using all of our assets. Uh, we use our helicopters to aid our divers and our teams. We were able to use sonar. That's how we know that there's vehicles in the water. Uh, so we'll use every asset and every piece of technology and equipment that we have while understanding that when you not just have the darkness, now the sun is up, that helps, but you still have the current, you have the, the depth of the water, you have the weather itself, uh, the temperature of the water, all of those things present challenges, and we just have to work through them as we go through search and rescue. Okay, Mayor Brandon Scott, thank you so much for making time to update us. We appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you.